It's a one-way ticket to Mars. It's one small step for a Perth man, one giant leap towards Mars. I wouldn't say incredible, but it is very fantastical. The four of you must carry on with a mission. For years, the closest we've come to walking on the surface of Mars is Hollywood, fueling our imaginations about one day living on another world. But for Perth's Coram Ellis, science fiction could become science fact. If somebody said to you, would you have liked to have been the first person on the moon? How could you say no? It, it's the same for Mars for me. To be the first human to set foot on another planet and hopefully survive and live on another planet is it's just mind-blowing. Corum has been shortlisted to join a Mars expedition, a bold venture by a private organisation called Mars One. Applications were called from people interested in being considered for the mission. 200,000 applied. They picked 1,056. Corum was one of them. I am Corum Ellis. And I am the first Martian. In a, a way, I, I wasn't surprised. I was, I was hopeful, I guess, the whole time, but I, I've, I've been so emotionally committed to it and uh, had, had really tried hard to engineer an application that would be appropriate. The private Mars One mission is expected to cost around $6 billion to mount, with the first manned craft landing on the Red Planet in 2025. It will be a one-way journey for everyone on board. A return journey would quadruple the cost of the program. The estimated real world cost of the program at the moment is around about six billion dollars. Once on the planet, the crew of four will have to establish a base and be completely self-sufficient. That's one area Coram has been working on at home. He developed a micro farm. How much did Mars play a part in you developing this? A great deal. So when I was building those prototypes and designing the systems originally, I uh, was always focused around something that would be high produce in a really, really compact environment like we'll experience in the Mars One habitats. The short list of around a thousand will be culled to 40 in two years and then the final applicants will begin preparation. And that's one of the ways Mars One hopes to raise capital by broadcasting it. It'll be a little bit like a Big Brother situation where the living environment and the training conditions of all the applicants will be recorded 24 hours a day, edited down into some power-packed, exciting episodes and released to the public. That will generate a lot of media attention and that will help generate a lot of funding for the program through advertising, brand affiliations, product placement and that sort of thing. While it all sounds slightly far-fetched, those involved are convinced the Mars One project won't just get off the ground, it will blast off. Do you think it's going to happen? I definitely do. The technology is available. It's a question of if we can organise enough Earth resources to get the program to occur. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It's been 45 years since Neil Armstrong became the first person to step foot on another world, sparking a generation of people dreaming of space exploration. Corum believes Mars One will do the same. I think the Mars program could be such an inspirational program for a whole generation, like the moon landing was. It spawned a whole generation of scientists uh, that were interested in how much we could achieve as a species and I think the Mars program can do that for a whole another generation. The first Australian in space, Andy Thomas, is now leading a cross-agency team working towards its own manned mission to Mars. He's sceptical about the chances of the private Mars One project and even less enthusiastic about leaving people on a hostile planet. You can't leave people there for long periods of time because of the radiation exposure. It would have serious health consequences to them. So these, these people would uh, not have expectation of a long life if they stayed permanently on Mars. You may well die on Mars. I may well die on the way to Mars. <laughs> There's a lot of risks involved in the, the program. But they're calculated risks and they're risks I'm willing to get involved with. Corum's 30 years old now and will be in his 40s by the time the mission is scheduled to launch. He believes it's important to stay fit and healthy to have his best shot 
at aiming for the stars and making his mark in history. Who wouldn't want to be the first human on Mars? Thank you.